Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chris Ave here, back with another FIFA 23 video on our channel, The Guide. And today we are going to talk about how to attack and score goals in FIFA 23. The goal of this video is to explain the differences between FIFA 22 and FIFA 23 to help you guys transition and adapt to the new game as fast as possible. For all the mechanics and techniques mentioned, there will be in-depth tutorial videos linked in the description down below, so you can check these out if you don't know how and when to use certain mechanics that are mentioned in the video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. First up, the new technical dribbling system introduced by EA definitely has a big impact on the game and it's a challenging one, because you now have to be much more careful how and when you try to out-dribble defenders, especially players with worse dribbling stats, for example, that could be your central midfielders, they turn rather slow and very quickly you're under a lot of pressure from defenders. The same can be felt when receiving the ball with defenders close by or when starting to sprint carelessly, because during those moments you're going to be very vulnerable and lose possession a lot of the time. So that's why in midfield and also in the final third you should rely on passes quite a lot and let the ball circulate to avoid challenges. One touch passes can also help, sometimes it's just better to simply let the ball bounce back instead of facing the defender. However, you need to take care with your passes because defenders intercept passes more successfully this year and if you get sloppy with your passing angle or you underestimate how close the defender is to the passing lane already, you can easily lose possession. It's also important to note that dribbling is not useless altogether. If you have an agile player on the ball, you can still use clever turns to avoid tackles. It's about finding the right moment to take risks in dribbling. In a good FIFA 23 attack, you get the ball forward with nice passing, you take out one or two defenders with a clever turn and then go on to distribute the ball for a scoring chance. If you want to see very detailed lessons on passing and all the other tips mentioned in this video, also make sure to check out the content in our The Guide Plus app. Here you can navigate through various categories and find tips on the things that you struggle with most or follow our new ways to score in FIFA 23 course, for example, track your progress and earn badges for completing lessons. And along the way, different quiz types help you to test your knowledge as well and learn more efficiently. There's a bunch of new free content in the app, so make sure to check it out today. Passing is pretty fluent in FIFA 23 and you have a lot of options to choose from. Of course, the normal ground pass is your bread and butter and since the offensive AI seems to be reworked and therefore attackers position better, it's easier to set up passing combinations, so always be on the lookout for the open player. Another powerful tool this year are through balls. They allow you to convert your attacker's runs into open space in a variety of ways. Normal through balls, lobbed through balls and driven lobbed through balls can all find their target. So if you want to set them up with even better runs, we recommend to practice triggering runs with L1 or LB. And if you want to go to expert level, you can use directed runs. These allow you to manually assign the direction your striker should take with a flick of the right stick. Don't forget though that you can also use R1 or RB to call players short in case you need a passing option. Once you get into the final third, I would also recommend using lofted passes. You can play these by double tapping the passing or also the through ball button. And since it can get pretty crowded inside the box, lofted passes are a great tool to get the ball over the defender's leg and to your player. They work very consistently this year and are definitely a tool that you can skill gap your opponent with. So in the last few FIFA editions, goalkeeper and especially auto blocks were really strong and therefore you pretty much needed clear cut chances if you wanted to score. However, that seems to change this year because goalkeepers aren't very consistent right now and auto blocks have definitely been nerfed. Both of these changes are reasons to start shooting more instead of trying to carry the ball into goal. So if the opponent isn't positioned perfectly, you have good chances to score even if there's a defender in the way. 
There are two new shooting variations as well. By pressing L1 plus R1 or LB plus RB while shooting, you can pull off a power shot. For this shooting technique, the aiming part is manual, which means the shooting assistance doesn't apply, so make sure to point your left stick at the goal. You need a lot of space for this finish as the run up takes a long time, but if the opponent gives you that space for a second, don't hesitate to make use of it. You can score some pretty cool goals from far away, or you can also finish one on ones with the keeper when you're completely through on goal. The second technique are outside foot shots which can be triggered by holding L2 or LT while shooting. If your player has the outside foot shot trait that helps but it's not necessary to score with this shot and they seem to be extremely effective against the current keepers and they could be a reason to set up your attackers with their strong foot to the outside because you need a right footed player on the right side or a left footed player on the left side to pull off these outside foot shots. And last but not least, of course, we can't forget about skill moves. As in FIFA 22, they are still an extremely important tool to create space and get past defenders. Step overs allow you to create tempo and push into open space. The jog open up fake shot can be used to cut inside quickly or push towards the goal line. It's a new skill move and you can pull it off by holding L1 or LB while performing a fake shot in a 90 degree angle. Elasticos are still there and can give you that quick surprise factor inside the box to get a shot off. And finally, getting to a stand with L1 slash LB and then doing a La Croqueta or Elastico once again seems to be a strong skill move combination. Obviously, there are a ton of other skills that are useful, so just be creative. You can find some more inspiration in our top 5 basic and top 5 advanced skill move videos. So those are our attacking transition tips for FIFA 23. Problem is, they're not going to help you win games much if you can see too many goals on the other hand. So that's why you should definitely also check out our how to defend in FIFA 23 video that's going to be linked on here in just a second. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and I'll talk to you in the next one. See you then. Much love. Peace.